Hello, I'm Karen Ross and I'll be your guide through this unit on gender and decision making in media industries. We'll start by briefly considering some of the key issues before discussing them in a bit more detail further on. When we think about who makes the decisions in media industries, the CEO, the editor-in-chief, the commissioning editor, we probably imagine a man and we would mostly be right. If we look at who runs media organisations, who sit on their boards, they are mostly also men. Why is that? Why do women struggle to achieve the most senior positions, not just in the media of course, but more generally, across most industries? When they do attain very senior editorial positions, their achievements make front page news. It is still noteworthy. When Jill Abramson became the first woman editor at the New York Times in 2011, she broke a run of 160 years of male editors. And when Catherine Viner did the same thing at Britain's Guardian newspaper in 2015, she punctured an even longer reign of exclusively male editing history. Arguably one of the world's most respected media institutions, the BBC, has never appointed a woman director general since it began life under John Reith in 1922. In 2017, the BBC published a report of its most highly paid staff, which showed a very significant gender pay gap in many instances. In some cases, as much as 300% women and men doing the same job. For many years, Researchers have argued that having a critical mass of women as media professionals is crucial if we are to see a change in the media landscape in relation to content. In other words, if we have more women working behind the camera, writing copy, working at the mixing desk in our newsrooms, radio stations, production teams and editorial offices, we would see a different kind of output. That what we would then see on our screens read in our newspapers and hear on radio would, or at least could be different. This is not to say that women would necessarily change the shape of the media, but it is to argue that women and men experience the world differently and those differences inform perception and practice. While most work on the gender media relationship has focused on content, representation and stereotyping, there is a developing body of work which looks at gender and decision making in a variety of different media environments and sectors, including journalism, news and the wider audiovisual industry, including film, both offline and online. What those studies show us is that issues of power and control are key determinants in shaping the media agenda. How that power and control is exercised is what we'll talk about in this unit.